Hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Victoria Rose. Good morning. Sleeping in a RV park in some random city. <laughs> we needed to charge everything because there was no sun yesterday and I had to use all the electricity to use Starlink the whole night to upload my video. So anyways, woke up and we saw this. Like what happened? This tears in the plastic. Big tears. Whoa. That's my wall. I just don't know what could have happened there. Cause it wasn't like that last night. The knives are facing down. It's not been cut on the outside. So like it is 32 degrees. My style lately is unmatched. It's been cold. It's been freezing every night, below freezing some nights. And then pretty cold during the day, which has been actually easier, not easier, but not as bad as I thought it would be. The problem is, is I think this tear right here came from, the only thing we can think of is that it came from it expanding, being heated up and cooled down too much and it's older plastic. I don't understand how that happened, honestly. This thing is going to be just a bunch of patches at the end of the day. Also, we were just looking up potentially a trip to South America, but we researched it just a tad more. <laughs> you know, I'm quite ambitious in my ideas, but I knew that you, there's a place in South America that you cannot cross the Darien Gap. But what I didn't realize is that there's no ferry or any other way to get to South, get your vehicle to South America unless you ship it, which is insanely expensive. It's like five grand for one day of shipping it. That would be 10 grand there and back. That's insane. Unless my YouTube was doing really, really well, there's no way that's affordable. So it's really disappointing. We're gonna explore Mexico. We're still going to Mexico. They can't take that away from me. We'll see what happens when we get there. I don't know, maybe I'll get sponsored by some brand and they'll be like, yeah, we'll sponsor you to South to South America. I'll be like, cool, then I'll do it. Cause you know, I have the drive and stuff. I just don't have that, the finances for that. Sorry, the heat is on, it's cold. It's also been raining in here today and the condensation is condensating. That's for sure. It's just been sprinkling, but it's definitely wet. This is wet from condensation. It was like a pool, <laughs> so. Hopefully this can dry out. It would be really funny though, to take such an old kind of clunky camper over to South America, like pay that much. <laughs> like this thing is not even worth that much. I could get a new camper, well, maybe not a new camper, but that'd be funny. This crumbles right off. What's well, gonna take you in there? You're falling into it. Got it. This is why it's good to have a man. <laughs> Cause I wouldn't have done that. It's really soft. scary. I don't know about this. One more time. I don't think you should go in there. That's just sand. Holy. Yes, we're gonna be stuck. Sometimes you have to know when to stop, and I will say, probably not a good idea to continue. But there's a little camp spot down there, so this is our home, we gotta be careful.
It's like shaking. Oh my God, it's so tight. I'd say just bring it down. It's like, it, I, uh, okay, uh, I don't know. The wind's gonna get under and push it back up. Careful. It's blowing up. It's blowing up. Uh, I don't know the protocol for this. It's lifting itself up. All right, so that is all quite dark, but what happened is it got really, really, really windy and the whole camper was shaking. We had to pull it all down while it was windy and it was really difficult. I think it'll be okay. Good job. I'll go out there and turn the starling so we can watch movies. <laughs> We're going to sleep with this top down tonight. There's another reason it's nice to have a man around. So we set up the bed. The problem with the bed, the cushion slides off the table because the table's very smooth and so is the, ki the cushion. We rigged it up like this. We put the table leg right here to push against this cushion so it doesn't fall off. There's a big crack in the cushions when you're sleeping on it, so it's very uncomfortable, but this is how we're gonna sleep tonight. <laughs> we're on, on kind of a flat area now. We moved spots because we couldn't get up the road to the one spot we wanted to go to. It's gonna be a lot warmer to sleep with the top down. I'm gonna have to go pee outside and have my pee just go. I'm gonna watch a TV show and then we're gonna try to sleep tonight and I'll let you know how that goes. And tomorrow we're gonna make our way to Moab. Let's get vibey in here. I feel like I'm in like an, an ice, in the Arctic, an ice box in the Arctic. Will we make it tonight? I don't know. I'm getting ready for the day. We're going to Moab. Uh, I slept very cramped last night, but it was fine, whatever. <laughs> Having some general maintenance repairs done. You know, a frustrating morning this morning for me, anyways, for America. I feel, I don't like to get into political things on here, so I'm not going to, but for everyone out there who's very disheartened or frustrated by what has happened in the election and things, I'm here for you. I got, I understand. <laughs> And the only thing that we can do now is try and not get too frustrated because I have this whole morning. How many days has it been since we had a shower? We put um, tape on it. It was like what, window sealant tape, right? And we're gonna put it on the outside and inside and it's actually working just fine. It doesn't look great, but this camper, it already <laughs> kind of looks pretty shabby. So any other things just adds to the character of it. <laughs> You guys might not know, but I, I have a very high-strung personality sometimes, and I'm just having a bit of a high-strung morning. I spit my toothpaste and things into the cup today, then set it down, and then the table got knocked. The whole cup of spit just, you know, went all over the floor and all over my speakers. It's little things like that that are just happening all the time that just kind of make you like... But it teaches a lot of patience, and I think it's it's good for me. But I'm very happy that the person I'm traveling with is very, very, very patient and very like uh, is always comforting me about things. Later in this video, I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about that whole thing because I haven't really addressed it. But in the meantime, it's time to set off for Moab, and hopefully this time it'll be better because it's gonna be off season. Every time I've gone there, it's been on season and it's been terrible. So we're going to um, see what it's like off season. the little town of Moab. And if you guys know about Moab, it's a big mm, adventuring t place where there's, it's around the canyon lands and different national parks. So it's like beautiful area. Sun is out today. We're gonna stop at the natural food store, get some lunch and then go out hiking. And I wanna explain to you why I say we lately and um, just about that. So let's go get some lunch and then get hiking. So the natural food store here is, it's really nice, but it's very expensive. Moab in general is quite expensive. So it's got a, 50% off sandwich. Anyways, I wanted to show you the most we've ever pulled in so far. We're pulling in 117 watts. 
This was pretty low last night. So this is gonna get fully charged for us tonight for camping. As far as power goes, we've been doing all right. One of those things that you need to go out and you need to figure out how much power you're gonna be using. And I think it would be very beneficial for us, you know, obviously to eventually have more solar panels and um, more battery. But for the moment, it's perfectly fine. Like we can stay somewhere with no problem for a day, sometimes two days um, with low sunlight, with sun. It's actually not too much of a problem at all. Did some thrifting here. I got this pure cotton jacket. I got this thermal underlayer. Got some different pants. So I'm just trying to get ready for adventures because I didn't really bring enough adventure clothes. 50% off. This stick. So that's lunch. at um, Island in the Sky, absolutely gorgeous. I'd say it's comparable to the Grand Canyon. It's so big and there's so many layers. Like, look at that. I was actually able to sell Yuki before I left. I forgot to mention that. I wanted to tell you guys about that. So I'm really happy. It's actually someone who just drove by and saw her and it's like, got a good price and she's to a new home. That's one update. The other update is the subject of me traveling with another person. This is insane. It's no wonder that this is like one of the main hikes that people take when they come here. I was mess at Arch. Now that it's off season, there's not as many people here, but this is absolutely stunning. It's a sheer drop off, but you can see the white mountains in the background. God. So am I not alone anymore? No, I'm not. A lot of people have said in my last videos, in my last few videos of who's we, Normally when I say we, it just means I'm talking to the camera and being like, this is YouTube and me. And I say we. So I just do that automatically and I am saying we now because there's also another person with me. So I'm just always saying we. In terms of solo traveling, a lot of people um, say a lot of things like, why don't you show the people that you're around? Or like, why do you just want to f just film you, blah, blah, blah. I'm doing it out of respect because most everybody in my life that I'm around they do not want to be on film, and that's totally fine, and I want to respect that. Not everybody wants to be uploaded onto the internet. For example, people like, show more of your dad, blah, blah, blah. He doesn't want to be on film. Or show more of your sisters. They don't want to be on film. They explicitly told me not to film them. And the same for the person I'm traveling with now. They want their privacy, and that's that should be okay, right? And I should have, be able to have my privacy as well. Now, having said that, of course, with my content, there's another person in there, so like, obviously I'm not gonna like pretend like there's not. It's just I want to keep the content how it's been and how it's going to stay. But just to let you guys know that I am traveling with someone and it's actually really nice having someone here with me. Solo travel has a lot of pros and cons and I think that everyone should do it at least once or twice or as many times as you need to if no one can go with you. And I've done that over and over and over again. And I have traveled with lots of different people. A lot of them, like I said, don't want to be on camera. Sometimes my stuff is solo. Sometimes I have people with me. And right now it's been really nice to be able to share this experience with another person. I think it makes more sense if the other person gets in the shots or this or that, it's whatever. Like it's too hard to edit another person out. So like, I'm just trying to navigate this all with you guys, with this person, yada, yada. We are trying to make our way down to Panama. That is the, the goal journey destination. I would love to do a video on the, the Darien Gap. I don't think I'll be able to get to South America unless I somehow come across five grand to get to South America. But the goal now is to get to Panama. The goal was, is Oregon, then Mexico, Central America. And I don't know, the, the camper, you know, it's had some issues, they've been fixed. We'll see if it can even make it uh, with the truck and the camper. And now that I have someone to come with me, a man specifically, I don't feel as intimidated by this journey. So uh, that's what I have to say about that. Did I ramble too much? If you're ever gonna to come to Moab, I highly, highly suggest you come on off season. It is such a better experience. Like, let me tell you, it's sunny enough to you can, you can still hike. It's not snowy, like it's bearable. It is chilly. We even found this camp spot like five minutes down the road from where we just were, which is gorgeous. And the views are gorgeous. A little uneven. So we're just gonna put these some leveling blocks under. The views, I mean, it's really good that we have a heater. It's been getting below freezing every single night. Legos. Right there. So one thing about living in a small space is it gets messy quick. 98, not bad. That's almost 100. That's good enough for me. Starlink. 
We taped the inside and outside of that and it's holding. Aww. Anyways, it's a little bit cleaner. Not a bad view out there. Sorry, I know the, the heat is like blowing right in the American frontier. I was able to do my laundry, which is, is the best feeling ever when you're on the road to have clean clothes. Like I've been lately trying to get only like natural fiber stuff. So um, high quality stuff, even if I had to pay a little bit extra or find it at a thrift store. Views, we have heat, we have internet. We have a stove. Right now, it feels like this is the life, and it, it is. Also, side note, one more thing I wanna make very clear is when it comes to my filming, my creative process, my social media and all that stuff, that is all up to me. I will, whenever I'm traveling with people and stuff, I do hand them the camera and tell them what frame to shoot, um, how to shoot it, blah, blah, blah. I know that people are gonna say, oh, you have someone else doing your drone shots or videos or this or that or whatever. It's all still me, all the editing, all the shots, everything, is something that I handle. Very helpful to have another person to navigate some other things like sometimes driving or you know, the stuff that I'm not as good at, like making fires, fixing things, and having a travel partner. And there are, like I said before, pros and cons to both sides of this. And yeah, I'm happy to experience the pros of traveling with someone else, and especially someone that you get along with. It's Traveling with someone else can be very, difficult if you don't choose the right person. So be very careful who you choose to travel with. Here's our water pump is not working. I don't think it's because the pipes froze. They didn't have it hasn't gotten below freezing during the daytime. So speaking of freezing, tonight is going to be the coldest night. We have slept in the camper and honestly that I've ever slept outside, it's going to get well below freezing. It's going to get down to under like 25 degrees Fahrenheit. That's cold. And the thing with this camper is it doesn't retain the heat well. Good morning. It was it was a cold one last night. Campground has toilets, so I'm walking to the toilets. I have become a super master of being on the ground. It's really luxurious to have any type of toilet, even if it's a fault toilet. Well, there's something to be said about that no one talks about, about peeing in the wilderness. Looking at the big sky, you're just squatted there, very vulnerable, part of nature part of something here. Very primal. That's today's morning thoughts. I'm gonna have some coffee now. I've had a built-in coffee maker. In case you wonder, I, we both drink different types of coffee. This is, we got these like from the Amish store. This is a uh, whole bean, medium roast, classic. Where's the kind I drink? We have a lot of different kinds of coffee. I don't know what's going on. I'm just here. But the, this Alton coffee maker has been really nice for, I've been having espressos and I put my collagen monk fruit sweetener in it. We've saved a lot of money on not going to coffee shops. Like having smaller portion coffee for me, like I cannot, I can't drink anything more than eight ounces. That's even too much for me. And it's, it boggles my mind how big Americans have their coffee. I'm an American, but I've never been able to down that much coffee. We just have like a little one of these and I think that's how coffee should be done. But comment below how you guys like your coffee because I know everyone has their own tastes. You guys know what time it is. We don't serve us right now to look up what it is, but more leakage. So it's another thing that needs to be fixed. Things are just starting to break everywhere. It's a signal. I'm just excited to finally get a nice long hike because yesterday wasn't that long, but it's reality time for that leak right there. It's really hard to distinguish what it actually is. Like it doesn't have that really pungent 
gear oil smell, but it does have a smell. The brake fluid doesn't look like it's low, and when you pump the brakes, it's not like coming out. So it's very hard to know what it is. This is a big part of van life, vehicle life, overland, all that type of stuff that's obviously not shown in YouTube videos. And I'm not gonna show it either because it's really boring and really frustrating, really, did I say boring? <laughs> Like the car issues that I've had you guys if you've been here long enough, you know Because obviously if this is a brake lines or something you don't want to be driving Like that especially around the canyons this you know this video has just kind of been the reality of Of this lifestyle as usual. It's nice though that I have someone else here helping me with these things Thanks extraterrestrial and I'll see you in the next video